Today, you're going to learn how to validate your MVP app idea so you can build your app confidently and avoid wasting time, money, and effort developing an MVP app that no one actually wants. Knowing whether people will want to use your MVP app can be tricky because there are actually multiple phases within the validation process, and at least 90% of app founders are completely unaware of this. But the process I'm going to teach you today will make it simple for you to follow each critical phase so you can validate your MVP app and start building and making critical decisions confidently. I'm Kristen Youngs, co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps, where we help CEOs and founders build custom software to start or scale their businesses. Let's dive right in. There are generally two types of app founders. One builds their app based on data and feedback. The other builds their app based on their own ideas. Now, the MVP app you're building will, of course, be based around the thoughts and ideas you've had, but it's absolutely critical to do thorough testing, analyzing, and research alongside your ideas. We see too many founders spend at least a year or more building the first versions of their apps without ever stopping to test or get feedback along the way. And it happens like this. They have a cool idea for an app, something they think is revolutionary and new. Then they go right into spending tons of time, effort, and often money building the whole thing out. And once they're finished, which honestly rarely happens, they launch the app to crickets. That's a hard process to watch someone go through though, because it's both defeating and deflating. Spending months or even years building something only to realize no one wants it is an awful experience. Now, there's a lot going on between when they initially come up with the idea and when they realize no one wants it. Three main factors hold them back from seeing success. The first is that they failed to identify a problem and instead came up with an idea. Now, I won't get into this because we've created a video that goes really in depth on ideas versus problems, but I will say that when you come up with an idea for an app, you're building something you think will be successful. When you identify a problem you can solve with an app, on the other hand, you're coming up with a solution for something you already know people struggle with. Most founders build their ideas, but the first critical step is to solve a problem instead. Now, assuming a founder is solving a problem, the next crucial step to building an app versus uh, strategically versus just doing a bunch of guesswork is to validate the idea. This lesson is all about validation, and I wanna quickly point out that there are actually two steps in the validation process. And right now we're only talking about the first one. We'll get to the second one in a minute. First though, a founder must validate their app idea. And this is the solution they've come up with to solve a problem they've identified. This is, this is a step far too many people ignore because they think that if they've seen a problem happening, there's no doubt people will wanna use the solution they've come up with, right? That couldn't be more wrong though. If you remember anything from this, remember that your ideas are never valid until they've been tested. Before actually testing an idea within your market, all you're doing is guessing, you're hypothesizing. In order to build a successful app solution, you have to validate those guesses. Now, a lot of people think validating an idea is really hard. Who do you reach out to? What do you ask them? But this goes back to our first point, which is that you must identify the problem you're solving before doing anything else. If you've identified a specific problem, validating your idea is easy because you should, without question, know exactly who has the problem you've identified. And if you don't know who specifically has the problem you've identified, that means you haven't actually defined the problem. It all goes back to that very first step. Everything can build from there. So again, Assuming you've identified a specific problem, you need to make sure the people who have that problem actually want a solution to it. You can do this in many different ways. Most of our clients are building MVP apps for their businesses or industries, and this is really important. We've seen clients pitch an app idea to the highest level management teams in their companies to see if a company would want to replace internal processes with an app. We've seen them pitch an app idea to their current customers or clients to get feedback. We've seen them reach out to other businesses in their same industries to gauge interest on an idea for a solution. We've seen them come up with an idea that solves a problem in their own business, and they can personally validate that way. 
We've seen them pitch an app idea to their close friends or family members, business teams. I mean, the list could go on, but it's important to understand that if you know the problem you're solving and you have experience with it, you will automatically have people you can validate your idea with. If you don't happen to have personal business connections, you can run polls, put up a landing page, and ask people to opt in for release updates. You can reach out to businesses via phone or email. Regardless of who you reach out to in order to validate your idea, though, there's one thing you need to be acutely aware of at this point. In the idea validation stage, you do not need to build an app. Most founders overlook this. They come up with an idea, immediately build their app, and then have no idea what to do when it comes to launching it. They ask things like, who should I market my app to? How do I know if people will want to use my app? How do I promote my app? Those questions point to a deeper problem though, and it has everything to do with validating an idea without actually building it first. This doesn't just relate to building apps either. In business, for example, savvy owners know to validate a product idea before ever building or creating it. For example, they might pre-sell a product or a digital course without uh, before actually creating it. By pre-selling, they can gauge exactly how much interest there is for their product before putting time and effort into it. Thus, nothing is lost if they don't get the validation they need. One of the things we did when validating our MVP program built to sale was ask people to apply first. This involved people spending at least 15 to 30 minutes filling out an application and explaining why they wanted to join the program. Based on direct feedback we got from the applications, which served as validation for our idea, we then created the basic framework of the program and pre-sold it. And that brings us to our next point, which is once you validate your idea in any of the ways we just talked about, you'll then move on to the next validation stage, which is validating your actual product. In our case, we had a number of applicants enroll right away which validated the product itself. And from there, we built out the rest of the program. So it started with a simple email asking people to apply for the program, which, which we hadn't created yet. And once we received validation for that, which was in the form of applicants, we created the basic framework of the program itself. You can look at this as the MVP version of it, the minimum viable product. We pre-sold that, which was our product validation stage. And after applicants enrolled in the program, we created the rest of it. So in other words, we had validation for the product at that point because people had actually enrolled. That gave us permission, so to speak, to put more time and effort into expanding the product. Now, most founders skip the two stages where they first identify a problem and then seek validation for their ideas without ever actually building anything. And they instead jump forward into this stage. What happens is, they come up with an idea and fail to get validation for it. They start building it without getting validation on all the features throughout development. And then they launch the app publicly, expecting to make money right off the bat. But people rarely pay for cool ideas. They pay to solve problems. And if you don't know for sure whether people want an app to solve their problem, you could very well end up wasting lots of time and money building it. The reality is, most founders fail to seek any validation for their MVP apps at all. But to break that down even further, they also overlook the fact that validation should happen in two distinct steps. The first part is to validate your MVP app idea only. And you can do this without ever even building an app. You can talk to colleagues, speak with management, validate based on your own needs, have people sign up for beta group information, and more. You can reach out to anyone in your network who's related to the problem you're solving. And this should be easy, assuming you've identified the key problem first. The next part is to validate your MVP app product. Once you receive positive feedback in the idea validation stage, you can move on to creating the basic product. And the beauty is, since you've already validated a need for your product idea, you can move forward with your MVP app's development confidently and without hoping or wondering whether people will want to use it. At this stage, validation of your product can come in the form of early signups, onboarding test groups, pre-selling subscription or purchase subscriptions or purchases, and more. 
Now, if you've already watched our video on identifying the number one goal of an MVP app, you know that this stage isn't about making money. Sure, bringing in some revenue can serve as validation, but this isn't the point at which your focus should be on having a profitable business. It should be on getting feedback. And if you haven't watched that video, you should go do so right after this one. Moving forward, remember to identify the problem your app solves. Validate your MVP app idea first, then validate your MVP app product. All right, I hope that helped you learn a helpful new strategy for your app. With the steps we went over, you should be able to build your MVP app confidently without risking time, money, and effort going down the drain. If you learned something new today, go ahead and click, click the subscribe button right below this video so you can stay updated on every new video released. And if you want to take this way further, head to coachingnocodeapps.com and sign up for our extended training series. It's completely free. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.